What are micropayments? Welcome to the show. Today we are going to talk about a really neat side of blockchain technology and how the ability to take payments from customers in a very different way is going to open up a whole bunch of new business models moving forward. All right, welcome to the show. Today we are talking about micropayments. Uh, this is a really cool element that blockchain technology and distributed ledger technology are going to open up for all of us and for various businesses. So for the last few decades, ever since kind of credit cards became a really popular way to take payment, especially with the advent of e-commerce and sort of online business models, there's sort of this one pain point, which is a transaction fee. So a credit card processor like MasterCard doesn't really, you know, they get they get paid a cut and a fee, like a percentage sometimes, like a flat fee, whatever. So they're not really a fan of businesses taking a payment that is like a dollar. Credit card payments are more profitable for a credit card company if the payment is large in denomination. So a credit card company would rather me take one $10 payment than take 10 $1 payments, right? And so that is sort of how most businesses have set up their um, sort of payment thing is like, if I want to have a monthly subscription to something, I will pay once a month and this charge goes through, this payment goes through once and the credit card company gets their transaction fee. There's some problems with this. And it kind of creates this concept called counterparty risk is that if you and I have an agreement to do something for a month, one of us has to take a risk on the other one. So if you, let's say I'm the client and you are the employee or whatever, if I pay you in advance, I got to trust that you're going to show up and do the work. Now the employee, if you wait and get paid at the end of the month, you've got to trust that I'm not going to be a flake and like skip out and paying you. So there's this concept called counterparty risk where we both, you know, one of us is dependent on the other party to hold up their end of the agreement. And for the most part, you know, that's not the end of the world, but there are going to be situations where you don't want any counterparty risk. So let's say, for example, I don't know exactly how much work I have for you. And so if we had this agreement where I had to pay you in advance, how am I supposed to pay you in advance when I don't necessarily know my usage? Uh, and even sort of similar to the other thing, like let's say you might offer to help me and you want to get paid hourly, but you don't know exactly the number of hours, you know, it, it creates this, this challenging thing. So the idea of micropayments is that very, very small transaction amounts can be used, processed on the blockchain in small denominations in small time frames, so it's kind of like the idea of like a drip transaction. So let's say you wanted you wanted to pay me something for every like hour of usage, and you didn't know exactly how many hours you were going to need it. So you could sort of like you would stream content, you can stream payments. So if you wanted to use a service for a couple of hours, you would just pay every hour using a blockchain payment. And the amazing thing about using blockchain for this kinds of thing is that the transaction fees can be so low, they're almost nothing. So blockchains like the XRP Ledger or Stellar's blockchain, where the transaction fees can be a fraction of a penny, you could afford to charge somebody every 10 minutes, every minute even, if the, you know, if you were charging somebody a dollar a minute and the transaction fee was a fraction of a penny, that would be something you could feasibly do. There's also other situations where, you know, it's not practical right now to pay people to do something because the transaction fee would just make the amount you were going to pay them like a moot issue. So let's say, for example, you are a company like Waze where you uh, were using your user base, your clients to report back data on traffic and road hazards and whatnot. And you wanted to incentivize people. If I were to actually pay you using a credit card system, you know, and I wanted to pay you like 10 cents for each thing you did, like it would be impractical for me to, to do that using our current thing. 
well, what if we had a setup where it was sort of streamed to you via blockchain payments and you kind of earned these rewards, kind of like earning tokens, but it was actually in, you know, blockchain currency, it would be feasible to, to actually pay people because you're paying them very, very small amounts uh, in actual money uh, that wouldn't be an option with credit cards. So you think about all these services where you have an agreement between two parties to exchange money for a service and it's unclear whether the counterparty risk is unmanageable or how long the service is needed for or whether the payments are just such a small amount it wouldn't work for credit cards. Those are now all opened up as possibilities using micropayments. Um, there's also the idea of using a tip jar, which we've seen a little bit in crypto. It's not really widely used yet, but I know it's something that the XRP Ledger team has talked about where, you know, if if I lo really like your Twitter thread and want to compensate you, I could just sort of tip you, you know, 25 cents or whatever the equivalent would be in some kind of uh, blockchain currency. And the idea of loose change. So when you walk by, you know, a busker on the street in a city or you, know, you see the sort of tip jar at the cashier and you just sort of throw in your loose change, this could accommodate the equivalent using blockchain technology. So the, um, the idea of how transactions could be processed. There's also things that are a hassle for the government, uh, like collecting taxes or even parking meters where the government would rather not have to deal with like trying to collect this money and they have all this sort of staff who does that. Well, what if, you know, if we do move to a central bank digital currency world, which I think is unfortunately highly likely, it is possible that, you know, your taxes would just be taken out from you on an incremental basis over the course of a year. Like property tax, for example, you know, you get this bill once a year if you don't have your mortgage doing it. And if it was just sort of taken out on a steady basis, then you wouldn't have it sort of like helps manage your bills types of things. So regardless of whether those are good or bad things, the technology would now exist via blockchain to support a very different set of, of payment models. So it's going to be kind of neat to see how businesses react to this and how people adapt uh, and how even things like Uber and Airbnb and all these sort of consumer to consumer businesses that have to use a third party like a credit card system to process payments or even they use PayPal or something, but how are they going to adapt to this newer model where the risk goes away and you don't have to worry about, you know, somebody fronting the money or fronting the, the service um, with this sort of counterparty risk idea. So that is the idea of micropayments. It presents very uh, some new options for taking small transactions very frequently or just small transactions period, which weren't really a practical realistic option in the credit card era. So if you like these kinds of topics and want to talk more about blockchain or the future of money or geopolitics, because they all kind of tie together, join me in my locals community. It's called twostepsahead.locals.com. We'll have the link in the description below. We'd love to see you over there and dig into a lot of these topics more deeply. All right, we will see you in the next video.